In this demonstration, I want to show you a chemical reaction that we will look at in more detail to see how thermodynamics helps us explain in quantitative detail what we observe qualitatively. In this apparatus is a tube that has been filled with a mixture of hydrogen gas, H2, and chlorine gas, Cl2. The tube is further encased in a clear plastic sleeve for reasons that will become clear shortly. These two gases can react with one another to make a new gas, hydrogen chloride. Dissolving hydrogen chloride in water is how hydrochloric acid is made. Just as was true for the thermite reaction, demonstrated in this course's introductory video, reaction of H2 and Cl2 to make HCl is favorable, but it requires an initial kick to get the reaction started. And that kick is the energy required to break the bond between two chlorine atoms in Cl2, which amount of energy is 242 kilojoules per mole. I'm holding here three different laser pointers. One lasers red light, one green light, and one blue light. As we'll see in some exercises in an early lecture, the energy of a photon, which is the fundamental unit of light, is determined by its wavelength. The red, green, and blue laser pointers emit wavelengths of 650, 532, and 405 nanometers, respectively. Let's see which, if any, of these wavelengths seems sufficient to break the chlorine-chlorine bond. Here's red shining into the gas mixture. Not much happening. Now, green. Nothing. Now let's try blue. Wow, something must have happened because that cork shot out of the inner test tube at high speed. Actually, as we'll work out soon, the heat released from the reaction causes a pressure increase of about 29 atmospheres inside the tube, and that either causes the cork to be ejected or the glass tube to break, and that's why we have it shrouded. We'll look at that calculation in a cursory way very soon, simply to illustrate that there is a quantitative way to model it, but we'll cover all of its parts in detail before we reach the end of the course so you'll have a chance to fully appreciate how our understanding of the molecular properties of the gases lets us predict the outcome of the reaction from first principles.